Hello, this is Eric of Not Bio Student. Welcome to the Zoom F3 Hot Tips video number three. In this one, we're going to learn a lot of different things, including battery life, left and right channel, sound, internal recording, or both speakers, how to fix that. And also another problem we can have as well as connecting the microphone directly here without any cables using just simply adapters. Now, how do you get the sound out of both left and right in your internal recording. You see this being off? That is our first problem. We got to turn that on. So let's do that. Right now I can't even tell what I'm pressing because the screen's too small for me to read, but let's see if I do this correctly. There we go. We have both enabled, even if it's only recording on the one and see if we can get both left and right speaker in the internal recording. I connected my Audio Technica right now that we see right here and we have it set to mono for a recording. Let's see what happens to our files if I have both left and right speaker or not. So now I am recording and I'm going to show this on PC in DaVinci Resolve to see if we have both left and right audio in our internal recording. And now I'm going to press record again but first of all I'm going to change this mono setting to stereo. It is now set to stereo and let's press the record button. You are now listening to me on my Audio Technica AT4040. How am I coming through? Am I playing through on both left and right channel? We're going to find out when we look at the recording because I need to verify for myself as well. Right now we have our files here from our original recording. These two are from being recorded in mono. Let's see what happened. This was microphone one. This is microphone two. And let's find out if this recording here, or if this one has data, nothing. Microphone two was not connected and we see there's no waveforms. That means there's no sound. Let's delete that file. Let's see our existing one. I'm gonna to go to clip attributes. We can see it's mono and audio one is mono. That is exactly what I want to see playing through both speakers. That's what will happen. I'm recording right now on OBS. I'm going to mute my microphone so we can play it back. And I'm going to show this on PC in DaVinci Resolve to see if we have both left and right audio in our internal recording. And that worked out perfectly. That's just what we want to see if we want left and right speaker. Now let's delete this file and I'm going to go to the other one that was recorded in stereo with both left and right speaker enabled and see the attributes of this clip. Now I'm going to go clip attributes. Wait a minute, we see audio left and nothing in right. That means we have left audio channel only on this. For some reason on playback it played through both speakers using DaVinci Resolve but if I click it right here. You are now listening to me on my Audio Technica AT4040. How am I coming through? Am I playing through on both left and right channel? We're going to find out when we look at the recording because I need to verify for myself as well. So if we notice, it was playing through only one speaker, just the left speaker as we saw in our attributes of our clip. Now if I did want to correct, correct this and I'm using DaVinci Resolve, I am going to set this to channel 1 and we'll have both speakers playing. So maybe you're thinking, hey wait, I want one file with both left and right speaker. Here is your audio hack. In this particular situation, we're going to connect this one side to our microphone. Now this left and right channel basically, we're going to make to one because it's split to one, like one cable. So I'm going to connect here and in here and no matter what I choose, it's going to be playing through both left and right speaker. Your problem is now solved through this hardware hack that works perfectly fine as long as your cable is to proper standard. 
I recommend a brand if you want something affordable like Hosa. H O S A. Now let's go through battery life testing. One thing to note though is when it comes to using batteries and changing batteries internally, we have to select the battery in our power. So if it's alkaline, if it's nickel metal hydride, if it's lithium, it has to be selected. Then we have to power off our device and then power back on our device to make sure it doesn't turn off during usage. Now let's go through some devices, batteries that I tested. We have these X-Star lithium on batteries, paid for myself of course. There are ones with higher watt hours, but the problem that tends to be of concern is fires, explosions, melting batteries, and damaging your device with a higher capacity lithium on batteries. So I got those for safety reasons. We also have our Panasonic and Elope Pro. These are nickel metal hydride. And we have Energizer Max batteries. Now let's go through each one. Going through our different batteries, we have the Energizer Max. These are non-rechargeable batteries at three hours and some. That is pretty darn decent battery life. Mind we don't have our Bluetooth connection. We don't have both left and right enabled with 48 volts phantom power, but we do have our light enabled on our Zoom F3 the entire time. Now we also have our Panasonic and that came in second and that's pretty decent for nickel metal hydride batteries and our lithium on is about one extra hour at six hours and some of battery life as shown here. Now one last thing to note is the Panasonic batteries are 1.2 volts compared to a standard battery of a AA being 1.5 volts so the lithium on is 1.5 volts making it more compatible with more devices using the X-Star lithium ion in case that's a concern to you. But for Zoom F3, it does serve its purpose just fine. Now, what if we wanted to connect the SE Electronics SE8 or some other microphone that doesn't connect because it's too wide? Just like this here is too wide to connect to the Zoom. How can we fix that and make it connect directly? We can use this straight adapter, connect right here, then connect our Sennheiser MKH50. So straight ahead, just like this, or normally this particular one will make it so I have to connect it backwards, but this one can be adjusted. If we look at the lines right here, we can see we can adjust it 90 degrees each way. And this one's the same way as well. There's a screw right on the top here. And as we turn around, we see other screw holes. So this can be adjusted as well. So I adjust it from its default, which normally you face down to up. What if I wanted my Sennheiser MKH50, just like so, maybe put on desk, record. In fact, let's record right now. Right now you're listening to the Sennheiser MKH50. 50. How am I coming through with this very expensive studio microphone that costs 1200 USD? Well, you tell me and we'll both know. Review coming soon at different distances, checking plosives and other details. Now let's continue on. If you watched my hot tip video on the Rode VXLR Pro, audio hack with the Zoom F3, you'd know that you can connect any 3.5 millimeter device directly to the Zoom F3 and there are no limitations and yet you keep the nice clean low noise floor using this better than a digital camera. So that is one of your audio hacks using 48 volts phantom power converted down to microphone aux power. And we also have this one from DPA. This one is a very expensive one, has great volume. In fact, it's louder than the Rode. But this one is what you call micro dot. And this is considered to be one of the future type of connections that allows you to connect different adapters to wired lavaliers. And I reviewed this with the DD WLAV DA35 with micro dot. So we can connect this directly rather than using the 3.5 millimeter adapter to this. And using this method, we can connect any, yes, any 
3.5 millimeter microphone to any XLR audio interface as long as we enable the 48 volts phantom power within the device. Please subscribe to Not Bio Studio. Help this channel grow. Check out some of the other videos, hot tip videos. This is part of that series. And if you want to learn more, especially tips and tricks, check out the playlist for hot tips videos. Now, when it comes to the Zoom F3, there are very, very few limitations. In my other hot tip video, I also show you can connect your mobile phone directly to the audio interface to make it an audio interface pretty darn cool so lots of capability beyond pretty much almost any other audio interface but keep in mind the audio levels are very quiet but 32-bit float allows you to lift that without adding any noise to the device whatsoever and it does not clip the audio and if you also saw the other hot tips I can record electric guitar just fine no distortions perfect so if you have any other questions, leave comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. This is Eric of NotBio Studio. Thanks again for watching and have yourselves a most wonderful day.